Esta montaña de masa de 90 kilos pronto se enrollará a mano y se convertirá en mil bagels. Aunque esta es solo una pequeña fracción de los 100.000 bagels que se elaboran por semana en esta tienda. Los trabajadores comienzan el proceso de elaboración a las 3 de la mañana y continúan hasta mucho después de la hora del almuerzo. Según el propietario Scott Spellman, Utopia Bagel se destaca de las miles de tiendas en la ciudad de Nueva York gracias a que ofrece panecillos calientes y hechos en el día. I say it time and time again. You may have tried a bagel, but once you try my bagel, you will not eat another bagel. Visitamos la cocina de Utopia en Queens, en Nueva York, para ver cómo se preparan bagels en grandes cantidades. Todo comienza con una receta de 41 años de antigüedad para la masa, que lleva malta de cebada. It's a really old school way of doing a bagel. Most stores that make bagels today use brown sugar, but to make a good quality bagel, you need this ingredient. A continuación, agregan sal y un tazón grande del mejorador para bagels puratos. So what that does, it softens the dough inside and it crisps the crust outside. Luego llenan la batidora con agua del grifo de la ciudad de Nueva York, que debe estar a la temperatura adecuada. We tend to use water that's around 60 degrees, 62, 63, but temperatures of the water may change when it's hotter and colder throughout the year. Más tarde, se agregan 90 kilos de harina para todo uso, lo cual representa una pequeña porción en comparación con la cantidad que tienen almacenada. You're looking at about 7,000 pounds of flour. Almost a two-day amount for us that will go through all this flour, and this is actually just one of my mountains of flour. La levadura es el último ingrediente. Aunque para los bagels de diferentes sabores, la receta puede incluir también huevos, azúcar o arándanos leofilizados. Y no está establecido con exactitud cuánto tarda la masa en terminar de mezclarse. Según Scott, para ello se requiere un buen ojo y años de experiencia. It's a thing called when it's ready. <laughs> How long have you been making bagels? 18 years. 18 years. Daniel's been rolling 18 years. It takes understanding the temperature in the air. It takes understanding his machine that he works with, how long it should mix. All these things are such important factors about what happens with our bagel. Una vez que la masa alcanza la consistencia deseada, se la divide en partes y se la lleva a la mesa de trabajo, donde se la vuelve a pilar toda junta. We can make up to 15,000 bagels in a day, and this will make approximately 1,000 bagels. La masa se cubre con un plástico para ayudar a que se ablande antes de enrollarla. And it's only about a five-minute process that allows that dough to connect a little better with each other. They're saying, hello, how are you? All those ingredients are basically doing that right now. En todo momento hay cuatro personas expertas en el enrollado de la masa listas para trabajar. Estas personas habilidosas tienen entre 15 y 27 años de experiencia y perfeccionamiento en el oficio. Y Scott se refiere a ellas como un estirpe en extinción. There's not a school of rolling bagels out there right now. And these people are experts at their field. Listen, I think Derek Jeter said it best. If you put 10,000 hours into something, you're a professional. And Daniel has definitely put 10,000 hours into it. Se tarda entre una hora y una hora y media en cortar la masa y enrollar cada tira, para hacer alrededor de mil bagels. It takes a certain type of character because it's very tedious. You're cutting the same thing over and over. And I can tell who is rolling what bagel by the way they lock their bagel and form it together. Daniel has that little lip here that I noticed about Daniel's roll, and then I can see, you know, those were Daniel's bagels. And it gives each bagel their own personality. Our bagels are like snowflakes. Everyone is individually different, and that's what makes it special. Una vez que los bagels ya están formados, se colocan en estas bandejas, se cubren con plástico y se dejan reposar por media hora. Luego se trasladan a una de las tres cámaras de frío para que fermenten durante al menos 24 horas. What we're gonna do now 
is open these bagels up because we still have to reduce the heat to stop the rising of these bagels. We tend to stop the proofing where a lot of places tend to expand their proofing so that bagels are bigger. There's a misconception that bigger bagels are better and they're not by far. As you see, each rack has approximately 1,000 bagels. So you're looking at 10,000, 15,000 bagels right before your eyes. And this is only one of my fridges that we keep the bagels. Here's my second fridge. Again, you have racks of bagels, one, two, three, four. We have close to seven, 8,000 more bagels. So this is basically where we'll keep our everyday making of the bagels. Now it's time for fun and games. We're gonna start baking some bagels. We'll always have two people working the oven. So there's a kettle man, which we'll call him. So he'll control the flow of the bagels into the kettle. And then there's the guy on the oven that will be his director. But the kettle is the ultimate guy in control because he knows when that bagel's ready to come out of that kettle. It's so important. Una vez que los bagels se hirvieron de la manera adecuada, se colocan en tablas sazonadas con diferentes ingredientes, como por ejemplo amapola, sésamo o la popular combinación de varios sabores. Now all these hot, yes, they are very hot. But if you watch me, I'm constantly dipping my hand in water to remove some of that heat. Now this again is where we put on both sides. So we're seasoning both boards, both sides. Después de recubrir con cuidado cada bagel, los trabajadores pasan las tablas al horno. Now, why we're putting them on boards? Because if we put these bagels in straight, they would stick to the slate that they're being cooked on. We put six bagels on a board. There's 16 boards that'll go into the oven. We have a Middleby Marshall, a 1947 oven. It is the heart and soul of my business. We're able to produce up to a thousand bagels an hour on it. Después de girar varias veces en el horno, los bagels se voltean para que la parte inferior se cocine de manera uniforme. Y luego ya están listos para sacarse y servirse a los clientes. See, these are so, look at it, look at the color on this bagel. Look at that beautiful crisp crust. My son always does the knock test, but feel that crisp crust? Look at that steam coming out of that bagel. In total, Utopia Bagels ofrece 30 tipos de bagels y varios sándwiches, como el de tocino, huevo y queso, o el clásico de salmón ahumado. Utopia Bagels emplea a 43 personas que se complementan y funcionan como una máquina bien engrasada para atender a los 3,500 clientes que visitan la tienda por semana. We're busiest on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We could have a line lasting for eight hours straight. But you get me crying about my customers because our fan base is like none other. It's like a landmark. Everybody's been coming here for over 50 years. It's the, like a home place for everybody. It's the atmosphere, it's the people, it's the owner. Everybody's so nice here. And when you come in, you feel welcomed. Everything is good. I've been around to other bagel stores, but there's no place like home. Scott treats you like family when you come here. Utopia Bagels is the best. The most important thing about our bagels is right here. And I get emotional about it, but it's the heart and soul. Every worker here has heart and soul. It truly is something I live for and something we work at. You know, my passion for making people smile with our food and what we produce is a joy for me. It really is. Oh yeah, those are the everything bagels coming out. Look at those colors. 